Bruchem Aboyim. The um, topic for tonight is boredom, and I hope I don't bore you with the topic. Um, it's interesting, sometimes life is very hectic. You have a lot on your plate. That's a challenge. And other times things are simple. Things just go day after day, and it's really everything's orderly. And what's interesting, it almost becomes boring, and that isn't even a greater challenge. Basically, boredom is defined as a lack of interest, listlessness, uh, really a lack of excitement. And the question becomes, what brings on the excitement of life? Um, a lot of times we think it's stuff, you know, and it's interesting that many times you've seen, there have been cases where rich kids really get into real trouble, so much so, even into murder. And the question is why? And the answer is because nothing has any meaning, because they get bored, because stuff will never make you happy, stuff will never, it doesn't stay exciting, it loses its thrill until you run down everything and the only thing that's left is life and death. And even though it's crazy as it sounds, they get bored. Life has to have an excitement to it. And we really change the elusive, we chase the elusive butterfly. It's amazing. Um, you see people today, grown-ups, playing video games. Athletes, who are, many of them college educated. But what are they doing when they're on the road, they're playing video games. You see people with their phone, they're playing Candy Crush. I mean, it, it's, it really amazes me. There's so much boredom, and this becomes the excitement of life. And it's really the evil inclination, as we were talking a couple of lectures ago, about the use of time. And it's really a real waste of time. So how do we, how do we perceive this this boredom, this, this necessity to fill the time with something, but something that's positive. You know, it's interesting when people tell you that, uh, how, how's everything going? Same old, same old. And it sounds so negative, when in reality, it's probably the best thing that a person has. The greatest thing we can have as people to make us strong, and that's what religion's all about, is structure. For a person to be able to have a routine, even a bad routine. Because if you have a routine, you can tweak it. If you just leave things up to what will happen and you kind of react to what life brings you, more than not, you're behind the eight ball all the time because you're always coming from behind. What a person really needs is the structure, for example, of religion. It's interesting. People get up every morning, they do the same things. Religion gives you prayer that you do, learning that you do, rules that you follow. And what people don't realize, and people kind of get bored with it, but the truth of the matter is, you may pray every day, three times a day, 365 days of the year, but it's really not the same. In fact, everyone in a synagogue is praying out of the same prayer book, and yet no two people are praying alike. Because every day with his challenges brings upon different prayer and different ways that you approach it. Excitement in life is something that you generate. And that becomes the key. It's how you approach something. Even in, 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 in business, taking a job, many times we look at the wrong thing. We look at work and we make some money. When in reality, a person should, as they say, make your hobby, your profession. Do something you like. And by golly, then you may just make a lot of money being good at what it is, being a little better than the next guy because you enjoy it. Money shouldn't be the determining factor. Stuff shouldn't be the determining factor. A true sense of joy in finding something that you like, even in religion. If you're not excited in what you do, then you're not going to pursue it. You're not going to try to be the best at it. And it's interesting, take an athlete. What they do is they practice the same thing over and over and over again to become better and better, make it a fine point. And that's what really what religion is about, bringing everything that you have into a focus of a laser, of 
What is it that God wants from me? How do I become better in this relationship with God Almighty? And this boredom, which it shouldn't be, the same old, same old is great. Because now you can focus on what needs to be done. And it's interesting, religion, Torah is really multifaceted. There's, not everybody is excited about the same thing. But if you can find something that you really like, something that you find exciting, and especially if you can share it with someone else, tell someone else how excited you are about learning this or that or other parts, then that generates more enthusiasm. You know, it's interesting, the Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, not Malcolm Schneerson, on Sunday afternoons, he would spend hours He'd give away $15,000 bills, single dollar bills, 15000 And he was in his 80s when he did this. And there was an old woman. She was already older, and she came through the line, and she had to wait quite a while to get, to get her dollar from the Rebbe. And when she came in front of the Rebbe, she said, how can you do this at your age? How can you stand here? And you look so fresh. And he said to her, when you count diamonds, you don't get tired. And that's the key. That a person needs to know, a person needs to find within everything you do. And especially learning, again, what religion does is it's a discipline that we practice in religion and we bring into the world. Everything you do should have an excitement to it. Nothing should just be done. Everything should be done because you care about it, because you want to do it, because it reflects you, because you're a part of it. And the boredom should only be that you're doing the same routine all the time, but that should be the excitement in that we see with Aaron. Aaron has said that, what was, what was the praise of Aaron? It's like, that he brought the sheep in the morning, brought the sheep in the afternoon. He lit the menorah every day for 40 years. Exactly the same way. He didn't change it up. But he found an enthusiasm every time he lit it. He did the same act. But he did it. There may have been different thoughts. It's interesting. We wear tefillin. We wear arm tefillin and head tefillin. The phylacteries. And they both have the same words in them. The same four chapters. In the head tefillin, there are four separate compartments. In the arm tefillin, there's only one compartment. It's all rolled up into one. And the question is why? And the answer is because even though we can have different thoughts, the four compartments, that's good. But when it comes to doing the action, the Torah tells us how to do it. So we have the ability to be individuals and to find our own niche of being who we are. And at the same time, we still fall within the structure of doing it exactly the way God wants us to do it. And that becomes important. To follow the structure and at the same time be able to be who we are, to find our individual uniqueness. And this is what God gives us. And not just in religion, but everything that we do. But we need to connect this with people. It's interesting that, in a sense, we're all addicts to something. But in AA, people who go to meetings stay, no, stay, they don't drink anymore. They stay connected. People who think, who have an ego, all of a sudden it's too boring. They're smarter than everyone. They're better than everyone. And they don't need to go to meetings so they can do this by themselves. They don't need this anymore. It's a crutch. They wind up going back and drinking again. Those that stay connected, those to become part of the whole. They tell a story of a man who used to go to synagogue all the time. And he got aggravated with people. People were stepping on his ego all the time. Didn't like what was going on. He stopped going. And he decided he can pray to God at home by himself. And uh, this went on for a little bit. And the rabbi of the synagogue came to visit him. And it was winter. And... The man invited him in, and he had a fire going in his fireplace. And the two of them sat down in front of the fire, and the rabbi didn't say anything. And they just watched the fire burning. And the rabbi got up and took the tongs that were next to the fire and took a coal out of the fire and put it on the hearth in front of the fire. And then he sat down. 
And again, no words were spoken between them. And they just watched as the coal went from fiery red to black and extinguished. And the rabbi turned to the man and he said, that's you. As long as that coal was in the fire, it burned red and hot. Once it was taken out and stood by itself, what it did is it burnt out, it was extinguished. I know you have problems, but when you take yourself away from the hole, the end result will be it will extinguish you. person needs to draw on other people, the joy of other people, the help of other people, the excitement of other people. And that's what makes life so exciting, sharing it with other people. You know, I remember I had a friend of mine. His mother said that joy with a friend is doubled and sorrow is cut in half. And that's what it's about. And that's why religion works so well, because it's, it's something we do with other people. We don't do it in a vacuum. We share it with other people. We share the joy with other people and the sorrow. But that boredom, that everyday thing of praying the same way and doing the same thing. And the truth of the matter is it's not. It's something that we attempt to do better and better, but how, much, how many times do we do, really do it the way we like to? So we keep working at it, and we get better at it. And as we get better, think about sports. You know, you have a kid who plays football in high school. He's great. Then he goes to college, and he's great. And he gets drafted into the pros, and the question is, will he make it? <laughs> what do you mean, will he make it? Because it moves up. It stops being a physical game, becomes a mental game. And that's where everything is. Everything is in your mind. True joy comes from the head, not from the body. When it's in the body, it's, it's, it's minimal. The greatest joy you can have is when your, your head, your mind, your brain, your heart comes into it. And that takes that which looks like it's boring. People, when they see you in religion, they, they look, well, there's nothing exciting about it. Just the opposite. Because you're totally involved. Not a little bit. You've jumped in. You've become totally dedicated to what it is. And that becomes the key. Get involved. Jump in the pool. Don't put your feet in on the edge and just swish around. And when a person does that and gets involved to what it is, and you're there with other people, each person, one coal is making another coal hotter. And when one gets a little cool, the other one makes it hot. And this becomes, this becomes the important thing. You know, we try to fill our lives with stuff, stuff that never really made anybody happy. It's moment. It's it just it's a momentary thing. I remember I had a yacht. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of work. What made it fun is when people came on. When you sh when I shared it with people, a home is a home. What made me a house is a house. What makes it a home is when people come over and you share your house with someone else. Then it becomes a home. Then there's a warmth in it. Remember, I had an aunt who had a two bedroom house. It was unbelievable. It was like a mansion because she was so warm and everybody that came felt so at home that it seemed like it was the biggest place in town. Everybody came there. Everybody wanted to take it with them. And that becomes the key. And that's what we need to be. And if we do that and we follow what the recipe is and we don't look at it as re repetition, but trying to get better at what we do, refining it, and making that which seems to be the same old. When I, I, people ask me how are things going, you know, I always say it's, it's the same old as it was. It's great. Structure, that routine. May give yourself a routine, as I say, even a bad routine. But if you give yourself a routine, the end result is you will get better and your life will get better and everything around you will get better. If you leave it up to chance, then what you become is a leaf in the wind and you'll blow wherever it, wherever it takes you. You need to dictate to life, and the way to do that is to follow the recipe, be structured, have a routine, and that boredom is great. Don't let the evil inclination give you, and that's what he does, he gives you a simple life because he wants you when you get bored, what you do is go to sleep at the wheel. I promise you, no one goes to sleep on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The Ohio, straight, yeah, you wind up in a field. You go to sleep. With those curves, you don't go to sleep. What we need to do is sometimes the evil inclination gives us a straight road just to, just to test us. What we need to do is make that road as exciting as the curves and make sure we don't go to sleep and we stay focused on what we do. With the help of God, we'll do that. God bless and have a great Shabbos and don't get bored.